Thank you again for joining us here for Apple One to One. Former Apple employee, I worked at Apple for so long, 12 years exactly, as an Apple creative and genius. And today we are going to talk about the docking station here at the bottom of your Mac. We're going to master this because I think there's a great deal of information about the stock that you may not know about. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We really do appreciate it. And of course, give this video a like just to help our channel grow. We're going to talk about the docking station down here. The idea of this docking station is very obvious. It's obviously down here because the most used items that you're going to use every day on your Mac are right here on the bottom. So as you can see, as I scroll across, it's giving this little effect where it's popping up so you know exactly which one you are looking at. And we're going to go through the different areas of the dock, also in settings, how we can maybe play around with this a little more. So number one is down here on the bottom of the docking station, you're going to number one look at something underneath an app with a light on it. You'll see that the light indicates that the app is currently active, which means that the app is currently on. So even if there's nothing on your screen right now, remember there's one thing to know about Apple, is even if you close a window, you still have the app open and you can tell based on the menu bar at the top. Another trick is on your keyboard, Command and Tab. Command and Tab is a great way to look at what apps are currently open. And what I'm doing is I'm holding the Command key down, I'm hitting Tab once, and then you can look through the items that you are looking at. You can actually quit apps from here as well. So as I'm still holding Command, I'm going to hit the Q, and that's going to quit the app. And as you can see, it disappeared. And I'm going to go to Safari, and I'm going to hit Q. And then I don't have to hit tab. I can't quit Finder. That's one thing that I can't quit. Uh, and then you hit Command Q. And obviously, I don't want to do that because I'm recording something. So we're not going to quit that. So you'll see that there are two lines right here at the bottom. These are separating for different areas. Everything to the left of the first line is customized, meaning that you told the machine to leave it down here. And that's where it's going to stay. And then you have these three in between these two here, and this is the most used apps. These are the apps that you recently used, and they keep them here as like a quick look. These will change based on your activity. So as you're going about your day, you will see different items pop up down here. To the right is anything that you customize that you, uh, are folders or files or network drives. Basically, it's a folder or, or a file connection you could throw down here at the bottom. By default, I believe your downloads and your desktop are down there. I don't remember. Uh, and then, of course, you have your trash bin. So that's the docking station down here. Now, there are many items I'm sure you're not going to use down here. So, for example, Freeform, I don't really use it. So you can take Freeform and you can drag it to the trash bin and it'll remove it from the dock like that. And if I let go, it disappears. So now it's no longer on the dock, but of course it's not deleted from the machine. If I go to podcast and I press down, well, I'm on a trackpad, but two finger to press down, there's, there's a here for options and then remove from dock. So you can do this two ways if you don't want to see an app down here at the bottom. And as you do that, it increases the size of your files. Let's talk about Launchpad. So Launchpad is an important app. I actually find it to be a very important app. Uh, but you can click right on Launchpad, which brings up all of the apps that are currently in your machine. So for instance, if I just remove podcasts and I want to bring that back, I can just do the search. And then all I got to do is just drag it. And then as you can see, it leaves some room and then I let go. And now podcast is down there. So I'm going to remove it again. So Launchpad, I think, is a is an underrated app because the moment you open Launchpad, you just have to start typing the app you're looking for, and it'll pop it up and it'll limit your selection down, which is really great. Let's talk a little bit more about this side here with the files and the folders. So if there is a folder that you access a lot and you want to have quick access to it, you can do that. So I'm going to open up Finder. I'm going to go to my movies. And I'm going to take the current wedding I'm working on. And here it is. I'm just going to drag that down here, and as you can see, it makes room down here, and I let go, and there it is. So this is just, well, really, it's a container file because it's a Final Cut Pro file, but if I click on it, it's going to open up whatever app supports that, and that's it. So the file's down here, it's quickly accessed, and this is great for me because that way I don't have to open, if I'm working on Final Cut and I had a couple other files open, I can easily open something. And as you can see, Final Cut is opening up, and it opens up that file. So really neat. Uh, same deal when it comes to the items down here is that you could drag it to the docking station and remove it. 
let's go ahead and close Final Cut. Also, with these folders down here, you can actually have it look two different ways. If you look at the folders, I have an icon right here that looks a little different than this one. That's because you can actually label these folders. So if I go or change like something about them. So if I right click on it, there's a whole bunch of options here. You can sort the information in there based on date added, modified, date created, and kind. So for example, in downloads, I have it by date added. So if I hit this, it opens up all the different items and it's based on the order that I downloaded it. So if I go to an example here, if I'm gonna if I go to this video, I could drag this to the trash and it removes it. So you can actually go inside downloads and it's opening up like in a fan motion. But you can also right click and do view content as and there's an option like grid. And then it opens up like this. So there's a different way you can open up the files. And you can also go in list mode. So it's very like almost old school Windows. Uh, you can scroll through that way. I actually hate list mode. I don't like that mode at all. Uh, and then you can do automatic. So that means that it just figures it out based on how much content you have in it. Personally, uh, some of them I like fan. I think that's a really good one. And then also you can go to display as. There's an option called folder and stack. This is what the icon looks like down here. If I go stack, you see it almost has like a whole bunch of files like stacked upon each other like papers. That's how this is done, but I personally don't like that uh, because it's a little hard to know visually what that is. So when I go back here, I'm going to go to folder and you can see it has a little icon representing downloads. And I would do that for a lot of folders. I Like I do that for desktop, I do it for documents. You can also chate, move items around in here if you want to move them around. That's really the idea of these is that you can right click and you have a whole bunch of ways to sort your stuff, how you display it, and how you view it. Also under options you can just show in Finder if you want to go right to the Finder window. Uh, if you are in the item you can just go right to the very top and then just click that. That's the reason why I don't like Grid. Grid is a little bit tougher. So if I go to Grid, like I have to scroll all the way down just to get to open a Finder if I want to get to that point, which is why I don't like it. So I prefer the fan option because usually you're trying to grab more recent stuff anyway or it all depends on how you organized it finally let's talk about how to work with the dock so if i go to system settings and we're on ventura and i type in the word dock there is a desktop and dock setting you can work on so you can actually make the dock smaller so it disappears as you can see it goes all the way down and then look at that look how high it pops up so if you want more room on your desktop you can i personally like it that way magnification also is how big this magnifies so if you would like to have it small you know or you want it off completely uh, personally, I like a little bit of a bump. I, I kind of like that. Position on screen. Now, this is different for a lot of people, but I have seen people change this around. Where you can actually go to the left and the right side. A lot of people don't know you could do that. I could personally tell you I don't like that. But if you're a Windows user coming from a Mac, this might be a little easier to understand. Although, on the bottom of Windows, you have a dock here, so like a bar. So... It depends on the user. We're just going to go over the items that are just dock related. So automatically hide and show the dock. So if you want the dock to disappear, but then when you bring your arrow to it, it brings it right back up. I personally like to always have the dock. And then they have an animate open applications. That's an animation that occurs like when it bounces. If you like that, great. If you don't like it, you can turn it off. Show indicators for open applications. So I like the indicators. I like knowing that what's open right now. So that little white light is important to me. Show recent applications in the dock. If you don't like this feature where the three items are showing up, you could just hide it and then they go away. So, I mean, personally, I kind of like it. I'm going to move my dock right back to the bottom. Finally, the last thing we'll talk about the docking station to kind of customize this is on the apps itself. If you right click on it, there isn't options here. If your computer is turning on at the beginning of the day and you want to open up as soon as you log in that's what that feature does so if let's say you log out and you log in and you want safari to open up automatically you can actually do that with open at login now that does take some time for your computer to launch so just keep that in mind also there is something called assigned to all desktops and this desktop or none. So remember, we have desktops in here. If I open up Mission Control, there are two 
desktops I have here, and of course you can add more. The idea of this is that I'm switching between the desktops and Safari is coming with me. Now let's say I don't want to do that. So if I go back and say this desktop, if I open up desktop two, you can see Safari doesn't come with me. Some apps you would want to use in every single separate desktop you create. So sometimes it's good. Like Safari, I think, is a good one because it's a web browser. So I think that's actually, I say, a sign on all desktops. So no matter when you're switching over from one desktop look to another, that comes with you. So something to keep in mind. I don't know if you use a lot of desktops or not, but I think it's not a bad idea. And each app also will have separate areas for their individual features. So that's really it when it comes to the docking station. I think this is just a nice quick video. I think it's really important to organize yourself so that way everything looks good and yeah so that is uh the features of the docking station thank you very much for joining us here for another great episode of apple one-to-one -one training and i love every single one of you i would like to take this opportunity to thank you for viewing our content don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you can see all our training videos as well as links to download our podcast